Hey everyone, it's Chrono from The Headphone Show. Today with me, I have the DT1770 Pro, which retailing at $599 serves as a successor to Biodynamics' very popular and classic DT770 Pro. Let's have a look. All right, so like its predecessor, the DT1770 Pro is intended to be a professional monitoring closed-back headphone that can also be used for mixing and mastering. What has changed from the DT770 to the 1770 is that it now features Biodynamics Tesla driver and it has a new build and design. So as usual, we'll first go over the basics, starting off with packaging and accessories. Unlike the DT1770, which only included a soft carrying bag, the DT1770 Pro includes a rather nice array of accessories. With the DT1770 Pro, you'll receive a Biodynamic branded hard shield carrying case, and even though it's too large to label it as portable, it should keep your headphones and accessories safe should you find yourself traveling with them. A notable upgrade present on the DT1770 Pro is that it now features detachable connectors, so it now includes two cables. Both cables have a single-sided 3-pin mini XLR termination on the headphone side, and they feature a 3.5mm connector with a thread on quarter inch adapter on the amplifier side. The only difference between them is that one is straight and measures 3 meters in length, whilst the other one has a coil and it measures 5 meters when stretched out. Lastly, the DT1770 Pro comes packaged alongside two different sets of pads, one of which is velour and another one which is pleather, and we'll talk about their differences once we get to the sound section of this review. Moving along to build and comfort, the DT770 was already a pretty well-built headphone, but the DT1770 Pro definitely kicks it up a notch. From the headband to the yokes and ear cups, the DT1770 Pro seems to be built entirely out of metal and pleather, which makes it feel rugged and significantly more premium than its predecessor. There are very few headphones at around the $500 mark with less level of build quality and sheer toughness, so rest assured that Biodynamics design here is excellent and should not cause you any issues down the line. Also, it may not be as important as the build itself, but I also really like the headphone's aesthetic, as its all matte black finish feels modern, whilst the metallic print DT1770 Pro on the ear cups has a nice, clean touch of contrast. Admittedly, it may not be as good as its predecessor, but I didn't find the DT1770 Pro to disappoint at all in the comfort department. As a result of the all-metal build, it weighs 388 grams, which is a fair bit heavier than the DT1770 Pro, but I personally consider that to still be relatively light, and it's well distributed. I don't think it'll be a source of fatigue for most listeners. Compared to the DT1770 Pro, clamp force on the newer model is also a bit tighter, but again, I didn't find it to be an issue in any way, and it's definitely not like the vicious clamp of HD600 series headphones. The only comment I have for comfort is that even though their inner diameter is fairly spacious, some listeners' ears may come in contact with the inner sides of the pads as well as with the driver since they're not particularly deep. It wasn't a problem I personally ran into, but I could definitely see it as being an issue for some users, uh, so it's worth keeping in mind. Anyways, let's now talk about sound. As mentioned earlier, the DT1770 Pro is intended to be a professional monitoring headphone for studio use. Now, I sincerely have no pro audio experience, so in this review, I'll only be sharing how the DT1770 Pro performed in my listening experience, which was for personal music enjoyment. Additionally, I'll be drawing some comparisons to the DT770 Pro, as that's the headphone that this one is intended to be an upgrade on. I was actually quite surprised when I first listened to the DT1770 Pro. It's very different from both the more V-shaped sounding DT770 Pro, as well as from other biodynamic headphones that I've listened to, which for me have had a bit too much energy in the treble region. Its tonal balance overall then is one I'd describe as being somewhat dark. It has pretty warm bass along with mids which possess a soft presence, but it still has a bit of low and mid treble hotness. For tonality, as always, we'll start off by talking about the bass. and. The DT1770 Pro's bass response is a bit of a mixed bag for me. For extension, it's great as it's really able to reach down all the way to 20 Hz and it's very good at surfacing the depth and rumble of those really low sub bass frequencies. However, it's the bass response tuning that leaves me a little bit disappointed. I don't mind the bass having a little added warmth, but the DT1770 Pro has a really pronounced elevation at around 130 to 150 Hz, which 
I feel knocks some of the balance out of the base region, making it come through as a little bloated and unrefined. When using EQ to turn down those low to mid bass frequencies, I found that the bass response here could be fairly articulate, but that stock tuning, whilst it may be fun and satisfying for some listeners, I found could make the bass feel a little bit lacking in precision. Then for the mids, I thought that the mid range on the DT1770 Pro was for the most part pretty good. They had a very smooth balance and a natural timbre that accurately represented lower mid tones with a solid body, though it did sound to me as though the upper mid range was a little bit recessed. Traditionally, I would consider myself as being a little allergic to the region between 2 to 5k, as I can easily find it as being forward or harsh, but on this headphone, I actually felt as though it could use 2 to 3 dB more in that region. So, if you're a mid centric listener, then you might feel as though the mid range here is a little too dark or maybe lacking in the presence that gives vocals more definition, uh, electric guitars buzz, and sizzle to cymbals. Lastly for tonality we have the highs, and the treble region on the DT1770 Pro is pretty interesting. It's still got two peaks, but I didn't find them to be anywhere near as harsh as on any of the other biodynamic headphones that I've tried. First, there's a small rise at around 6k of about 2 dB, which introduced some minor glare in the lower treble. Then there was a much more prominent peak at 8.5k, which despite adding sibilance to consonant sounds, it wasn't actually all that sharp. If anything, I personally found the background sizzle and unnatural glassy edge that the 8.5k peak added to uh, overtones to be more of an issue than the sibilance itself. And Again, even for me, and I'm fairly treble sensitive, I didn't really find the treble peaks here to be all that searing or forward. It's just that instead of being harsh or fatiguing, they came through as unnaturally or artificially brightened. One last thing I'd like to mention for the treble region is that I wish they had a little bit better uh, extension to the upper treble as they didn't feel quite as airy as the DT770 Pro, which in turn made the 1770 feel a little bit more closed in. Moving on to technical performance and starting off with resolution, this is a category where I find that the DT1770 Pro really falters. And it's not just that it doesn't have the detail retrieval capabilities I would expect for a headphone in this price range as it's handily outperformed by the Focal Lex and Hi-Fi Man and Anda, but it's also that to me it doesn't quite convey the same sense of clarity that the original DT770 Pro did. Comparing the two side by side, both with and without EQ, the DT1770 Pro hasn't been able to reproduce tracks as cleanly in my experience. In the bass region, it's not as tight as the DT770 Pro and it feels a tiny bit slower. Then in the mid and treble ranges, vocal and instrument tones sound to me as though they had a slightly cleaner or more cohesive structure on the DT770 Pro. Mind you, I wouldn't describe it as being a grainy sounding headphone at all, as for internal resolution, it's in the same ballpark as the Sennheiser HD600 and the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. However, both of those headphones, depending on where you look, can be found usually at around half the price of the DT1770 Pro, and that's new of course. And then there's also the DT770 Pro, which is commonly found at around 149 a quarter of the DT1770 Pro's retail price. Then for soundstage imaging and layering, one of the things I've always appreciated about biodynamic headphones is that they tend to possess good spatial qualities, and that remains true with the DT1770 Pro. It may not improve upon the DT770 Pro, but it still has a pretty decently sized soundstage, which conveys a sense of distance that is surprisingly good when considering how small the ear cup enclosure is and how close the driver is to the user's ears. I even find that it outperforms some open back headphones I've listened to. Additionally, the DT1770 Pro has pristine imaging, as it's very capable when it comes to pinpointing the directionality and positioning of sound. Then, for instrument separation, it wasn't quite on par uh, with the likes of the HD600 or Sundara, but it did a fair job at keeping tracks from feeling cluttered and keeping instrument lines from becoming indistinct. Lastly, for technical performance, we have dynamics, and this is a category where I found that the DT1770 Pro performed quite a bit better than its predecessor, as it conveys a very good sense of punch and slam with low notes that hit with authority, and it delivers a satisfying physical impact. 
Also, in the upper registers, it aptly reproduced the strike and attack of instruments like pianos, guitars, snares, and xylophones, which gave them more weight, and it just made the listening experience as a whole more engaging on the DT1770 Pro. A quick note on sound isolation is that the DT1770 Pro offers outstanding noise attenuation, and in this regard, it easily eclipses the performance offered by the DT770 Pro. It may be because of the slightly tighter clamp force, but generally, I feel like it consistently seals a lot better than the original, and because of this, it has some of the best uh, no passive noise isolation that I've tried on a headphone, matching even that of my ZMF Verite Closed. Also important to notice is that the DT1770 Pro is just as good as at keeping sound in and from leaking. Of course, this is not a portable pair of headphones, so bothering people around you is likely not going to be a problem, but it's good to know that if you're gonna use them while talking to people online or in an office, they're, you know, your sound's not gonna be leaking out and annoying the people around you or leaking into the microphone. Before I forget, I just wanted to briefly talk about pads and EQ. So, as I mentioned earlier, the DT1770 Pro comes packaged alongside two different sets of pads. One set is Allure, and the other set is Pleather. Now, in my listening experience, I honestly didn't hear much of a change when swapping between the two different sets of pads. The only things I did notice, though, was when going to the Pleather pads, I felt as though there was a slight emphasis at both the low to mid uh, bass bump, as well as at the 8.5k treble peak. But aside from that, you know, there wasn't really uh, any significant difference between them. Uh, although I actually, also the pleather pads had a little bit better isolation, but aside from that, there really wasn't much in it for differences. Then, as for EQ, whilst its peaky treble and dark bass and mids combo could be a little awkward sounding at times, I didn't find that the DT1770 Pro had me reaching out as desperately for EQ as other biodynamic headphones normally would. Still, for my taste, I felt like I could use a little bit more tweaking uh, to bring it closer to my personal preference. So I made an EQ profile for it, and if you want to try that out, there's going to be a link down below to a post I made on the headphones community forums, which is a compilation of all my EQ presets for every single headphone that I've reviewed. All right, so now to wrap up this review, I sincerely don't think that the DT1770 Pro is a bad closed back headphone. It has some of the best build quality I've seen, it has very good comfort, and its tuning I think many listeners will find enjoyable or agreeable. However, at $599, it's just too tall of an order uh, for what it offers when compared to other headphones in the market as well as when compared to its own predecessor. If you're not particularly into the DT770 Pro's V-shaped tuning and don't use EQ, or alternatively, if you really like the build and aesthetic of the DT1770 Pro, those are really the only scenarios in which I'd recommend choosing the newer model over the original. But even then, I'd highly advise waiting and looking for them on sale, as they do occasionally go down in price to the much more appropriate $400 range. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. And if you'd like to learn more about the DT1770 Pro or other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com, as it has dozens of review articles available on it. For more headphone audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show. Until next time, this is Chrono signing off.